ओम नमो लोहे सर्वत्रिकावर्ती अयंता ओम नमो लोहे सर्वत्रिकावर्ती सिद्धान ओम नमो लोहे सर्वत्रिकावर्ती आयरियान ओम नमो लोहे सर्वत्रिकावर्ती ओवजायान ओम नमो लोहे सर्वत्रिकावर्ती सावन ओंकार बिंदु संयुक्त नित्यं ध्यायती योगिन कामद मोक्षद ओंकाराया नमो नम नम समय साराय स्वानुभूत चकाशते चीत्सभावाय भावाय सर्वभावादे अज्ञानतिरंधा ज्ञान अंजन शलाकया चक्षुर मिलित तस्म श्री गुरव नम तीर्थंको जगत नजवर्थ ओंकार नाद जिन नो जयवर्थ जिन न समो शरण सौ जयवर्थ ने तीर्थचार जग मजयवर्थ नमो ये तीर्थ नायक ने नमो ओंकार नाद ने ओंकार संगरते ने नमो ते श्री कुंद कुंद ने होकार जिन वर नो कुंद नो ध्वनि दीय नो जीन कुंद ध्वनिया प्या अहो ते गुरु कान नो अहो भगवती मात नो ध्रुव अचल ने अनुपम गति पामेल सर्वे से धने वंदी कहो सुत केवली भाषित आसमय प्राभृत अरे हूँ एक शुद्ध सदा अरूपी ज्ञान दर्शन मै खरे कई अन्य ते मारू झरी परमाणु मात्र नथी अरे जम नेत्र तेम ज ज्ञान नथी कारक नथी वेदक अरे जाने ज कर मोदय निरजरा बंद ते मज मोक्ष ओम नम सिद्धेव्यो ओम नम सिद्धेव्यो ओम श्री सुधात्मा ने नम जय जिनेन्द्र टुडे इज अगस्ट फोर्थ टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी Tuesday, and we are continuing our discussion on basic Jain principles. And in basic Jain principles, we are on a very important topic. Well, all the tip topics are important, but this one carries a significance because it's it's about of comprehensive knowledge, the soul and knowledge. Knowledge is a soul, and soul is a knowledge. It is so intertwined. Two, 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 two are so intertwined that if you want to know one, you have to know the other. In otherwise, you are having deficiency in your understanding. Having said that, now how does knowledge acquired? I mean, I I, I have a knowledge attribute. A knowledge attribute is a mode, but exactly how the function occurs, exact what transpires in this knowledge and knowledge chain, how does a knowledge gets acquired, and that is a very very important thing to understand. We all are thriving to get some exertion. We week after week after week we all meet only. With the sole aim, how to obtain some meditation. <clears throat> some Isar's language says that to have a faith on the eternal soul is a some meditation. Sri Kali Dhruv Atma ni sadhan karu eno nam some meditation. So to 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 the absolute definition of a um, enlightenment or right faith means to have the faith directed to the eternal soul. 
simple looking, it's simple statement. <clears throat> then, where is my faith so far? My faith is directed to the alien objects of the universe since time infinite. What's an alien objects of the universe? Well, anything besides me as a soul, everything is an alien objects or non-soul entity. So since time infinite, my faith is directed to the non-soul entity, alien objects of the entity. It looks far-fetched idea. How can I be having the uh, faith directed to the alien object when I was in a nigod, lowest form of life? So all those things, we have to dissect this knowledge and each and every part of the knowledge gets dissected. Now I understand mechanism of action occurring into the soul substance. I understand what's a non-soul entities. I, I have to understand what's a soul entity. And then once I know the difference between non-soul entity and soul entity, then I can separate them. Means my faith is just directed to the alien objects of the universe. I know who they are. Now, this is a soul entity. This is non-soul entity. Non-soul entity, my faith is directed since time infinite in the past. <clears throat> so over here, first I have to understand, understand what is what is what. There's a glass of water. If I understand one thing. I'm extremely thirsty right now and I don't want to drink water. But you are not giving me that glass of water. And we have the kind of a argument of course. And ultimately you just say one thing only and one thing only. That this glass of water is a, having a poison inside. That knowledge getting known. Tell me how long it will take for me to get rid of that water from my room. One, one fact only I knew that there's a poison in that water. Will I keep it on my desk? Instantaneously it gets thrown out because knowledge occurred. <clears throat> Similarly, if I know that my fate to the alien objects or non-soul entities since time infinite, if I end up knowing and I know that my benefit is in my soul entity, me as a soul entity, if I know that one, how long it should take me to get out of the non-soul entity and go to soul entity? has to be instantaneous, just like the water we threw it out after knowing. That's why knowledge is important. Now, before we further go, what's a non-soul entity? What's a soul entity? These are abstract words we are using right now. Well, simple thing. This physical body associated with the soul. When I'm in Nigod, in one second, I used to die and take birth 18 and a half times. Still, and at that time, the knowledge expression was extremely minuscule. But still with that minuscule expression of knowledge, that Nigod soul says, body is mine, body is mine, body is mine, body is mine. And as a result, in one second, 18 and a half times, that soul suffers the birth and suffers the death. 
And that's why Nigod living being, even though it's a minuscule knowledge expression, he has an intense misery because he believes that knowledge, I mean, the body is mind, body is mind, body is mind, body. And I keep on doing that one. One sense, two sense, three sense, four sense. I'm a five sense sentient being. What do I do right now? Body is mine. Body is mine. Every activity since morning till night. It's directed to the body is mine. Body is mine. That sentence. So forget about all the non-soul entity of the universe. My house, my family, my money, my car, my business, my whatever, whatever, whatever. Forget about everything else except body, physical body. If I'm, it's a summertime, I would like to air condition on. If it's a winter time, I would like to heater on. And if I'm hungry, I like the food, so on and so forth. Every body related activity, that's an alien object of the universe for us, for every living being. So my attention is always focused on the physical body. Now I understand if I understand that this is my problem. Then second thing I have to know what's the solution also. First thing, knowing problem, I know that taking attention from the body. But where will I take the attention to? And so I have to know the soul entity also. If I know the non-soul entity, physical body, then I know what's a soul entity. That knowledge, 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 knowledge is important. That's why Jainism puts tremendous weight on this knowing activity. So now we are on this chapter that we want to know, number one, what is this knowledge? How knowledge gets acquired? What's the process? And where can I get into trouble? And what are the steps I should be looking for to understand the non-soul entity and know the soul entity once I know it, once I know it, once I know it, there's a poison inside. You just give it up, that water right away. Once I know it, what's a soul entity, non-soul entity, then the division becomes overnight. Overnight, overnight. Not overnight. One samai. One samai. One samai means blink of an eye, innumerable samai pass by, million, billion, trillion, they are countable units. Beyond countable units called uncountable units, and if that many semi pass by in a blink of an eye, out of that one semi only, it takes one semi to take my attention away from the alien object and to bring it to the uh, 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 soul entity. One semi, that's only the difference between me and us and Siddha Bhagwan. With the Siddha Bhagwan, and the living any other living entity only difference is one samai one samai one samai siddha bhagwan so aryan bhagwan siddha bhagwan their soul is a pure every living entity soul is a pure aryan siddha bhagwan have a pure attributes infinite attributes every other living entity has an infinite pure attribute it could be nigod it could be that small little ant or mosquito or a frog or cow or human anyone infinite pure attribute so two out of two we are same as a siddha bhagwan soul is an soul is a soul is a substance soul is an attribute I have a pure one, he has a pure one. Problem is with the modes. Uh, Siddha Bhagwan, Arin Bhagwan, every summer they have a pure mode, and I have an impure mode. Only one summer mode is a difference between Aryan Siddha and us as a transmigratory soul. 
So the, the Acharya Bhagwan has made life very simple for us. To understand, you don't have to be Harvard graduates. Simple thing. One samai, you have an impure mode, and you have to remove that one and bring a pure mode in. That's all it is. What is the pure mode? What's the nature? What, what, what is the job of that impure mode? Where is, it, where, where is the attention directed? Where should I bring the attention to? And all those things, this knowledge, knowledge, knowledge provides. Once we have the thorough knowledge, then it's just a question of jumping from that impure mode to the pure mode. One summer, one summer. So, Acharya Bhagavan made life easy for us. That's good. But at the same time, at the same time, to understand the nature of that impure mode, to understand the nature of the coming pure mode, we did, we have to put our work together. We have to learn, we have to read the scripture, we have to understand the scripture, we have to raise the question, we need to have the answer to our questions. And that way we are getting towards the knowledge which is quote unquote almost complete and then we can move ourselves from the alien objects of the universe body and beyond to inside. Isn't it so? So this gives important why that knowledge is so important. Knowledge is so important. Kunkuna Acharya Dev, 2000 years back, writing Samaisa, 415 stanza, he kept on saying, soul is a knowledge, and knowledge is a soul, and soul is a knowledge. He keeps on saying for 415 stanza. Amrachandra Acharya Dev came 1000 years after Kunkuna Acharya Dev. Kunkuna Acharya Dev was beginning of this up our time period. And that was 2000 years back. And Amrachandra Acharya Dev came, came 1000 years before this time. Kunkuna Acharya Dev, in the beginning of this, uh, beginning of this, uh, 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 this time cycle, not time cycle, but uh, be beginning of this uh, by uh, Isvi Sun or whatever we call it. And then uh, Amrachandra Acharya Dev came 1000 years afterwards. And we are now 1000 years after Amrachandra Acharya Dev. So Amrachandra Acharya Dev started writing critics on Samaisa. Amrachandra Acharya Dev had a tremendous control on Sanskrit. The commentary that he has written down in Samaisar stanzas, not only Jains but even non Jains, they say if you want to know the best Sanskrit, you should read Amrachandra Acharya Dev's Tika on a uh, commentary on Samaisar. Sometimes one sentence ends at, uh, at the end of the one, one page or two page or three page. That kind of ability he had. And from there, now we have the Gurudev Sri Kanji Swami gave the discourses on it. And as a result, we have all that above knowledge available today on our fingertips. So now we are coming to that. What we started that uh, 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 Pramandna comprehensive knowledge. Baselines are basis, basis, basis already been made. So let's see where we were and what happens next. Uh, <clears throat> quickly, we will just go through this slide, uh, which we have discussed at great length last week, but uh, because it will be tied up today uh, in our uh, class. So let's bring that one up. So, direct knowledge, Pratyaks Praman. There are two types, direct knowledge in conventionalness and that transcendental knowledge, Parmarthik Pratyaks. <coughs> transcendental knowledge, that's a omniscience knowledge, 
or direct knowledge or complete knowledge. Now, the second guy is called direct knowledge, but it's of the conventional sense. Every sentence, every chapter, every book in, some, uh, in, in Jainism will touch conventional sense and absolute sense. We have to have pretty good idea about conventional sense and uh, 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 um, uh, absolute sense. Absolute sense is <clears throat> absolute point of view means of uh, uh, nishchainai means to know a thing the way it is. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is a book. This is a book. If I know that this is a book, it's a book. So it's a direct, it's a complete knowledge, direct knowledge. But, and I said this is book, and I didn't say that this, is a, this was a bed or kitchen or light or a pillow or fan or anything. Book is a book is a book. So that's a right knowledge. Again, this is an example. But how did I get this knowledge? <clears throat> Omniscience Lord, he has knowledge of all the of, 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 of past, present, future of the universe and every substance of the universe, he has a knowledge at a given time. So that's a complete knowledge. That's called transcendental knowledge. The way it is, the way whole universe is, he can visualize past, present, future in a given time. But we, five sense human being right now, or any, any living entity, they also will have direct knowledge, but of conventional sense. Now, what that means? Transcendental knowledge means soul, by itself knowing because soul has a knowing capacity and with that knowing capacity soul doesn't need any help of physical body or senses soul can know directly but we are having limitations in knowing i have a five senses and mind we have five senses and mind as a human being so we gather knowledge with those five senses and mind. And we use the help of these five senses and mind. That's why whatever knowledge I acquire is called direct knowledge, but it's called conventional sense because some other entity is involved. See the Bhagwan, Aryan Bhagwan, directly they know it. They don't need help of any senses or anything else. But we mundane soul whether I could be a, an ant or a fly or a mosquito or whatever whatever or human being I need my senses to help me to acquire the knowledge so when I say this is a book because I read over here it says Srimad Rajchandra Pranit Atma Siddhi Sastra that we say and then I open the book and there are things written and everything. So that's why I said this is a book. Means I acquired knowledge by touching it first and by having the eyes reading it what it is. And then I made the decision that this is a book. Certain music is fantastic. What does it mean? Means that music was perceived by me as a soul through the help of ears. Rose fragrance, they, they, I love the fragrances of the rose because my nose is involved knowing that, 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 knowing that knowledge. Same as taste and touch and everything. So, it's a direct knowledge. 
I saw Atul yesterday and he is here today. Is, is, isn't it in right knowledge or not? He is in the class. He was there in the class last week. He is in the class right now. So it's a right knowledge. I can see him on the screen right now. So there's a dear one. But my eyes are involved in gathering that knowledge. And that's why it's a direct knowledge of a conventional sense. Means it's an indirect knowledge. A word is direct knowledge in conventional sense, or it, it could be other thing is called indirect knowledge because senses are involved in acquiring that knowledge. If let's say that I, I was blind person, Atul Gosalia was standing with me last week and he's standing in front of me. How will I know he is here? My eyes are not there. So it's an indirect knowledge or direct knowledge in conventional sense. I'm using those two words very, because next set of things we are going to talk is important. So it's called direct knowledge in conventional sense, or other way of saying that it's a called indirect knowledge because it is obtained through the senses. Why it's indirect knowledge? Did I not see him perfectly? Yes. Did I not hear that music perfectly? Yes. Did I not smell that rose perfectly? Yes. Only if I had COVID, I won't be able to smell that rose. But no, I don't have COVID and I can smell that rose. Okay, all right, all right. Now, that knowledge I'm getting is in a fragmented form. What's that new word we are throwing? There's a mango sitting in front of me. Every house is there, the mango right now. I'm looking at the mango. Yellow orange color. Hmm. <clears throat> Sounds good. I smell that mango. Sweet smell. I'm touching that mango, it's soft to the touch. And I tasted that mango. It's an absolute delight. Mango said to me, Mango said, hey, you know what? I'm complete over here. Complete over here. Know me completely. So Mango did not hide anything. It says, I'm at your disposal. You know me completely. <clears throat> So Aryanth and Siddha Bhagwan knew it completely directly. What, how did I perceive this mango? Through my eye, in my knowledge mode, eyes made the image as the color. The nose made the uh, impression of smell. Hand made the image of touch and tongue made the image of taste. So I have four different senses are doing four different way. They are telling me as a knowledge more that hey, combine together, that means it's mango. But the knowledge obtained is a fragmented knowledge. And that's why it's called conventional sense. Mango said, I'm not hiding anything, but I, as a having a kind of a limited knowledge expression, that I have to take one, two, three, four senses help to know it. That's why it's a direct. Did, did I not see it's a yellow color, yellow orange color? Yes. Did I not smell? Did I not touch? Did I not taste? Yeah, it's a direct knowledge, but it's a fragmented knowledge. It's a conventional sense obtained through the senses. Soul is a super sensuous entity. Soul cannot be perceived through the senses. Senses are matter object and they can know only mat material things. It's a heavy sentence. All the senses are material senses. If somebody doesn't have eyes, you mean he cannot survive? 
Somebody is totally deaf, cannot survive. Somebody has whatever, whatever, all those things, all senses, even though they are not there, that uh, living entity can survive. Think about one sense, two sense, three sense, four sense, a living being. They don't have total five senses. They live in the universe. So you, uh, one can also live without these senses or some, or some of the senses not available, not present. So direct knowledge in conventional sense because it's a, and the senses are involved and senses are matter object. And that's why you understand matter object and that to in the fragmented form. That's why it's called direct knowledge in conventional sense. Having, if this is clear, now next sets of things are going to be easier to understand. So all this 15, 20 minutes we just discuss about it is direct, word direct knowledge. Word direct knowledge was supposed to be understood properly. So direct knowledge, now I know what does it mean. It's a direct, but conventional phase because senses are involved. Okay. In transcendental knowledge, you don't need senses and you can do it without senses. So now we are we have limitation with these guys only. So we'll talk from there. So let's let's start. We just we all talk transcendental knowledge. We talked before. It's called perfect perception, partial perception, perfect perception is a omniscient knowledge, partial perfection is a uh, clairvoyance knowledge, telepathy knowledge. We have discussed this one a lot in uh, detail, so that's why I won't go in detail much. So now, <clears throat> some Vyavarik Pratyaks Praman, which direct knowledge in conventional sense, one which knows a thing clearly. I mean, I knew about this book clearly. I saw that mango clearly, but partially. Partially means mango was seen. Mango was smelled, mango was touched, mango was tasted. So partially with the help of senses and mind, that's why it's called Samvyavarik Pratyaks. For example, okay, so we already talked that example. So, oh yeah, here. Yeah. Sensory knowledge, Matignan, and scriptural knowledge, Sutagnan, those are two knowledges we have it right now. We are um, 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 we are given two types of knowledge, sensory knowledge and scriptural knowledge. Knowledge can be done into five parts, sensory knowledge, scriptural knowledge, uh, 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 clairvoyance knowledge, telepathy knowledge, and uh, 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 omniscience knowledge, out of which we have first two. One to four sense living being, they only one, means sensory knowledge only. We are lucky enough to have two senses, uh, two, two knowledge, sensory and scriptural knowledge. And with those two guys, we are getting knowledge, some of our direct knowledge in conventional sense, because we get the knowledge through the senses, partial knowledge, fragmented knowledge. And so that's a function of these two forms of knowledge. From this direct knowledge in conventional sense, from these guys, now we have to go to the direct knowledge from absolute sense. So now we may have to take the senses away. How can I do that? And that's the next phase that with my limited, limited knowledge of sensory and scriptural knowledge, how can I obtain right faith? and experiencing of the soul, which is a super sensual knowledge, and I have only sensory knowledge with me, so how can it happen? To tell this thing, to come up to this thing, and to show the process, Kunkun Acharya, they took 144 stanza in Samaisar, and then in 143, 144 stanza, he says, this is the way you can get out of this conventional knowledge and end up with the uh, absolute knowledge. So we are climbing a very tough height right now. Up to 144 stanza of Samisar, yes. We are determined to climb that uh, height and we are progressing pretty good so far.
these questions just you can just stop me anytime so don't worry about that. Hi, uh, uh, yeah. Nimesh here. Uh, yeah. Quick question. Yeah. When you say direct knowledge in conventional sense, basically you describe the describe of the Vyavar in the Vyavar? Conventional sense is a Vyavar. Vyavar means what? Conventional sense means what? Two objects which are separate, but to consider them as a one, that's called vyavaha, that's called convention. Knowledge is there, but now I involve my eyes to gather that knowledge, means I bring knowledge and eyes together and just say, I saw Nimish today. But the eyes are involved, that's why it's called conventional sense, because senses are involved. You enter the Baba, you enter the house and says, Hmm, some some nice smell is coming. Very, very nice smell coming from kitchen. Great food. Nose is involved. Your soul end up knowing, but nose is involved. That's why it's called conventional sense. Because it's a fragmented form of knowledge. Conventional sense, senses are involved to gather that knowledge and that knowledge for the um, material object. That's why it's called conventional sense. Vyavahar name. Nishchai name, absolute sense, means to know directly. As we gave the example other day, in the dream, when you're sleeping, all five senses are in a, in a hibernation. <clears throat> and you are sound asleep. And now you've got a dream, and in the dream, you can witness absolute colors and smell and music and everything. A prince is getting to the level of king today, he is wearing a soft, beautiful, silvery clothes. Or not much, I mean, beautiful, colorful clothes. He is listening to the music, people are dancing in front of him. He is eating a rich food and everything. All those things you are sensing in your deep sleep when all five senses are in hibernation. How did you perceive all those things? And exact, exact reality you perceived there. <clears throat> so, this is what the soul can know directly. That was we can try to prove that way. The Srimanji has written on the uh, um, um, uh, Mokshmala. He has written about that uh, 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 a beggar that he's sleeping under a tree and he's uh, hungry. He did not get a food today. And while he's sleeping, he got the dream that he's a king and he's getting a great food and beautiful clothes and this and that and everything. And he's enjoying every second of it. And pretty soon, time is passing away and the sun comes on his face from the shade of the tree. Now the sun is coming on his face and he ends up waking up. And he says, gosh, my dream broke down. Similarly, we are doing the same thing. We are in a dreamland right now. My money, my family, my reputation, my business, my this, my that and everything. When we wake up, hey, this is all mirage. I am the eternal soul substance. Everything else is separate from me. When we wake up, that's what we are trying to do. How to come there. So, yes, this is the conventional sense. Means it's a, number one, it's a knowledge of the uh, uh, alien, uh, knowledge of the matter object, number one. Second thing, senses are involved, number two. Third thing is a fragmented form of knowledge. And because of all those things, it's called conventional sense, knowledge from conventional sense. Right? Okay, thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> Any other questions? Okay, so now we are going to go further. Now we have come. Yes, go ahead. One more question. Yeah. Uh, how about like, you know, intel, uh, intelligence for a buddhi, man, ankar, those are, is that part of the direct or indirect knowledge? 
their their ahankar let's say that uh, ahankar means ego ego means sense like not in the bad sense but in the, the, the fact that i am a tool that that ego yeah i am a tool right i am a tool means who is a tool is a soul named a tool how many names that soul got it in the past so that's a transient name and that too that soul is associated with a physical body and to recognize that physical body you just gave a name fake name or what was that name and that's where you are known when i say atul means i'm talking about atul and not about kirit so it just con conventional point of view stops there only just to separate between those two entity that's it job of the uh, 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 conventional point of view is to make sure the different entities they maintain their individuality but in general you are the soul i am the soul we all are same soul there is no difference at all nigod soul or bhavi soul bhavi soul heavenly soul siddha bhagwan soul they all are exactly same but by using intelligence to kind of different to discriminate intelligence right? is a mind and mind is called material object why material because there are mind material particles making the mind just like the eye material particle makes the eyes ear material particle makes ear similarly mind material particle makes mind so they are matter objects and so they will know only matter because they are matter object they will know only material thing so mind but ahankar is ego how did the ego come in picture in derogatory way or positive way ego is a uh, but, but, but i am i am kid i am the greatest of the great i am the richest person i am the poorest person i am the dumb person i am the that that ego in a positive negative sense both the things come because i take ownership on this material objects and that means a physical body and beyond i am the richest guy on this universe or in this or in this earth right now so so you have collected so much material object and you just say they are mine in the form of quote and quote money they are mine but they are matter object and you are the soul how can a soul the the, the, the conscious element can have ownership on on a material objects because they are not yours they will never been yours they will never be yours and so if you have the false impression that they are mine that's your ego and greed so they all are considered as a matter object right yeah i understand so let us go on. now that we made this 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 is the basis direct word direct knowledge that is important that because the next set next set of next next set of slides will talk through this direct knowledge onwards of course this direct knowledge is of conventional sense obtained through the senses but they will become basis and now will progress further in obtaining further knowledge in so what happens we'll see that <clears throat> Uh, we saw this faults and everything last week so paroksh praman means the uh, indirect knowledge or knowledge of the soul from upat and anupat that means knowledge of the soul gathered from senses mind light discourses etc so upat acquired substance soul has acquired senses and uh, soul has acquired senses and mind through the senses and mind when i'm getting any knowledge that's called indirect knowledge or direct knowledge of conventional type remember those two words are synonymous indirect knowledge or direct knowledge of conventional type 
they both have same word. So paroksh praman means indirect knowledge, means knowledge of the soul from upad anupad. That means knowledge of the soul gathered from senses, mind, light, discourse, etc. For example, scriptural proof, agam praman, and omniscience preaching, sarvagnani vani, are all paroksh praman. I, 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 when I'm talking this thing, I'm giving you scriptural proof, such and such scripture says such and such thing. But they are, they are the matter object. And I'm quoting from those matter object, whatever is written. Or omniscience Lord, omniscience Lord has preached something. Sarvagnani Vani, preaching of the omniscience Lord. How did I gather those 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 uh, those uh, uh, discourses from omniscient Lord? I heard it. I heard it. I read it. I heard it. Senses are involved. They are uh, indirect knowledge. Now, having said that indirect knowledge, then we are going to discuss five things on that memory, means smaran, recognition, pratyabhignam. Logic, Turk, inference, Anuman, scripture means Agam. So now this indirect knowledge is getting known to me through this series of these five guys. Smaran, Pratyabhignan, Turk, Anuman and Agam. Uh, 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 memory, recognition, uh, uh, logic, uh, inference and scripture. So these five one, two, three, four, five, in ascending order, we, we gather the knowledge. Now we are just going, entering into the phase, how I am gathering the knowledge. So, Parokshgnan, indirect knowledge, or what's the other name? Direct knowledge of conventional sense. They have memory, recognition, Recognition could be of two different types. Recognition of unique type, recognition of the equanimity type, and each one we are going to take a lots of time. So we are just overview, we are giving the uh, uh, definition of each one right now. Logic, then anuman means inference, and inference can be reason, proposition, the example, application, and uh, conclusion. Hetu, uh, pratigna, drashtan, upnai, and nigaman. And last one is a scripture agam. So now we are going to embark on this guys. And the basis for that is a indirect knowledge, parokhnan, or the direct knowledge of conventional sense. Everywhere, when all these things, when we all these uh, pink bullets, when we are going to talk about it, we are going to say the base was the direct knowledge of conventional time or in other words we'll just say word direct knowledge we may not say the whole sentence but if you direct knowledge is a base from where the memory comes direct knowledge is a base from where recognition gets a follow and logic uh, inference and scripture comes so direct knowledge of conventional time that's what i have through which i'm going to going to get all this knowledge about my, uh, uh, I'm, uh, I'm, going get, I'm going to get further knowledge, refinement of knowledge will occur, but again, up to here when I come. See, it will just go from memory to recognition, to logic, to inference, to scripture. All this succession occurs, all that succession occurs, that will have a basis of direct knowledge of conventional type. That's a basic thing from there, all this thing up to our um, scripture when i come still it's an indirect knowledge indirect knowledge and so i know so many things you know so many things we know we 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 we, we, we just say that okay i'm aware of this one i know this thing very well i know all those things up to here they're all indirect knowledge now when i come up to here Remember, we will be talking everything on, from the soul's perspective. Now, we are not going to take the perspective of the material object. So all the way up to here, now I make determination 
of the nature of the soul. Now I know exactly what the soul is. Now I know exactly what the non-soul entities are. Once I have pretty good idea about soul and non-soul entity through this indirect knowledge, Now, question is to separate them, to separate them, and that separation is called Samyak Darshan, Samyak Nan. So, if I, I have to start, go, go through all these stages to make the firm determination in the indirect way about the nature of the soul. And then the same scriptural knowledge, same sutagnan. Now I'm going to turn around and let it go to the uh, soul substance, and that will be experiencing of the soul. These things, all the way when we come up to here, it just makes determination of the nature of the soul. So knowledge, 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 knowledge is important, and thereafter. Now, the, 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 the faith attribute, faith mode is a blind. Faith mode, faith mode doesn't know anything. Because since time infinite, faith said, this is good for me, this is good for me, this is good for me. So put the uh, 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 ownership on the matter object, on the physical body. And that faith is so strong, so strong, since time infinite, it's coming up. Yes, sure, I have different bodies and everything, but still, no matter, I could be an uh, animal, I could be plant kingdom, I could be four cents, three cents, two cents, I could be heavenly soul, but again, everywhere I have a body. So body is mine, body is mine, body is mine. That attitude is so deep-seated, so now this knowledge is shaking that foundation. So now that when we came up to the scripture and everything, now my determination of the nature of the soul becomes so strong. So now that faith said, hey, am I doing something wrong? And knowledge says, yeah, you are the problem. You have the faith to the wrong person, wrong thing. So faith said, what can I do? Where can I go? Knowledge says, hey, you know what? I know the nature of the soul. Go there. So now this poor faith, it just, okay, I'll turn around. So it just turns around. But turning around, who gave the message? Knowledge gave the message. So that's why when we go from here to here, each time our, our knowledge will become stronger and stronger and stronger about the nature of the soul and also non-soul entities. Having said that, now we'll continue further down. So any questions so far on this major classification? And we'll be talking in great detail about each and every one. So by the time we are done, you will have a pretty good idea that uh, where we exactly belong and what is my, the, the, the pathway opens up for me and then it just just takes me to the right the right path. If I know it, when I knew that there is a poison in this water, how long it took me to get rid of that water? Instantaneously, when I know the nature of the soul, what's my benefit? Where am I? If I know it, how long it should take for me to get out of this transmigration and uh, faith to this uh, 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 physical body? non-soul entity, it should occur instantaneously. But here, poison and instantaneous, here knowing, because remember, body is mind, body is mind, it is so deep rooted, so deep seated, to shake it up, it will take a while to understand that part. You try to get out of this physical body, and body will not let you have your attention go away from it because this is the attention that I have focused since time infinite. So it will take a little while, but it's okay. Mahavir, after getting monkhood, it took 12 and a half years of intense meditation for him to obtain omniscience knowledge. 
and he already had at that time he had a four knowledges uh, 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 the, the right uh, right sensory knowledge right scriptural knowledge tell uh, 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 the clairvoyance knowledge and telepathy knowledge. out of four important knowledges he had still it took 12 and a half years for him it will take a little while for us but no it's okay if my life ends up uh, my my life comes to an end in this life that thing will continue to come in the next life also so my sadhana my aspiration will continue in the next life also as long as i have proper understanding so that proper understanding that knowledge will come with me when i go to the next life so nothing to get discouraged that you know what will happen when i die this knowledge will come with you and you will continue your further progress in a lion's life when the mahavir obtained samyak darshan thereafter here quite a few lives occur but ultimately each life all that knowledge continued with him and progressive purity continued to occur to him and in this life mahavir became omniscient lord and he became a siddha bhagwan kiran bhai i have a, a question please just trying to get a sense of how the timeline is mm -hmm. so you get indirect through indirect knowledge you get from 1 to 5 yes up to scripture yes then because you have enough gnan now mm -hmm. you realize that you've been doing things wrong so you get some yak darshan mm -hmm. which is the faith that says only the soul is there everything else is irrelevant put girl what up yes okay so then you get some yak darshan first mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then you get some yak gnan even though gnan is required to get to some yak darshan they, they both occur together we just say two sentences some yak darshan occurred and samya gnan occurred but remember knowledge you are getting right now knowledge i am getting right now that is called wrong knowledge because it is associated with the wrong faith wrong faith is body is mind body is mind. that kind of faith is there so knowledge whatever i have knowledge that knowledge is labeled as a wrong knowledge mithya gnan but when the knowledge says listen this is soul and this is non soul entity and now the determination is so strong and there is a word called yatharth tatva nirnay yatharth means the with the reality the way it is tatva nirnay the nature of the reality to know exactly what it is when that determination is so strong then that knowledge falls into the soul's the soul's domain and it becomes direct knowledge at the time from indirect to direct and at the same time faith from alien object gets directed to the soul so knowledge and the faith will both will go together to get the samyak darshan samyak gnan samyak charitra to you know everything okay thank you so the bottom line your knowledge is a vehicle so you say i want to change my faith i want to change my faith but what faith will you change do you know where your faith is directed to do you know what's where do you want to bring your faith to so now that comes to the knowledge and that's why knowledge is a integral part you one would like to have the liberation to start with the for getting liberation one has to start with the right uh, samyak darshan means right faith to have the right faith you know what it is and that knowledge we are gathering right now to come to that point okay right okay okay kirit bhai yeah go ahead a question che to yatharth tatva nirnay mm -hmm. happens in the soul yes in the knowledge in the soul you are right in the soul yes but in this, the knowledge gun the who is the, see when we just take soul means knowledge did not occur over here knowledge did not occur over here knowledge occurred in the soul but actually when you are entering into the soul and say hey where did the knowledge exactly occur then soul substances hey i am the inert forever 
attributes as I'm the pure and inert forever. But who is the culprit? Who did the knowledge? And Maud says, yes, sir, I'm the one. I did the knowledge and knowing action. In a family, in a, in a Shah family, Ravi, Ravi became a shining kid. But when we say, oh, that's a, 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 a Rekha's family, that kid is from the Rekha's family. Rekha's family is there, but that Ravi is the instigator to get that fame. So in the whole gamut of Rekha family, it's a Ravi. Ravi's action made him famous to whole thing. Similarly, in the soul's gamut, soul is a substance, soul is an attribute, no mode. Mode is the one which is doing the job. And similarly, that knowledge, mode is the one which is doing the job. So this, that means knowledge, mode is a working workhorse and soul gets a credit for whole thing that, hey, you know what? I did all the knowledge. The, 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 uh, 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 army is fighting on the field. When they win, then the president won the war. Actually, he was sitting in the Oval Office all the time. But he won the war because he is the owner of everybody. Soul is the owner of everybody. So action occurs in knowledge more. Yathar titwa, tatwa nina occurs in the knowledge more. And that knowledge more tells the faith attribute that, hey, you're wrong faith. You bring it to right faith. And this is the reason you give up that uh, 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 non-soul entity and come to the soul entity. We all know that we have to leave the non-soul entity, give up the physical body's attention at this and that. But where do I go to? Okay, I gave up my attention here. Where do I go now? I don't know that. So first thing I have to know, who am I? What's my real nature? Where is the peace and love and the happiness and everything coming from? And then you just say, okay, give up this thing because you have the support over here. You can take the, the, the shelter in this soul substance. So you don't know both the things, mainly the soul, where to take the shelter right now, you know, right? So that gun paryay mm -hmm. is samyagnya. Yes. Now, yeah, that's a gnan right now. That's a knowledge right now. But that knowledge mode, when the faith is coming, the faith mode is also getting you know, from above, uh, alien object coming to the soul substance, then that faith is called samyak darshan and the knowledge mode is called samyak gnan. They get that because they have the knowledge and faith of the soul substance now soul as a whole okay thank you okay. any other questions we already taken two three minutes more but uh, what we'll do we'll start next week we'll start with memory pratyabhignan logic and all the things so that will go kind of for you know sequence wise in amazing that uh, how uh, much uh, acharya bhagwan they have made it such a nice sequence so it will be easily understood for all of us you know and that's a whole idea knowing 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 is an important thing a, 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 a monkey wants to jump and he wants to jump from one one roof to the other roof he will first he will just take few steps back and then he will jump so we are also over here we want to jump from the non-soul entity to the soul so we take little breather and try to understand what it is and once we understand all our effort will be directed in the proper way on it there's no other choice. Simple thing, knowing that this glass is poison, so I just give up right away, right away, and a very second. Similarly, this, this is my shelter. This is my beneficial place. So why, why should I not go there? It will be very, very relevant in a way to work. You know? Okay, all right? Okay. If there are no question, then we'll just take a rest over here. Uh, thanks for your attention. Okay. Jawani ke gyan se suje lo kalo 
सो वाणी मस्तक नमो सदा देत हूँ नाइन टाइम्स का मौका मिलती है जय जिनेन्द्र जय जिनेन्द्र जय जिनेन्द्र